what's up everybody welcome back to riding with b cray i am your host b cray it is a blistering 71 degrees this morning it is thursday morning the week is almost a week but i want to get up here and just let you know what is going on with my man board because i did say i was going to kind of walk y'all or take y'all through my whole man board process and I haven't been doing it because <laughs> it's it is people it is so much stuff but I'm not complaining about it anyway watch this video to the end and let's just get started so mid board process so for those y'all who have not who haven't been living on a rock or hasn't been following my channel once again I am B Cray that hasn't been following my channel I am currently in the middle of a mid board slash retirement that, that that's the best way to explain it because when you're over 20 years they won't they're medically they'll just medically retire you instead of man board you but i think i, I think i think last time i told y'all i had a meet with my peblo and my peblo is the is the person that's on the army side that's in charge of your whole um retirement for me or for every soldier it'd be the man board process right he or she kind of um make sure that everything is going to plan, everything is going to schedule, and then everything is collected and pushed off to the doctors the way it's supposed to be pushed off, right? So I had a meeting with her, she gave, she told me all these rules and, and what I can and cannot do and you know, stuff like that, right? So, and I had, then she connected me to um, my first, I wanna say VSO, who is your uh, VA representative more or less when uh, set up your appointments. She connected me with her and then she got on the phone. So me and her had a we had a phone consultation because I did not feel like driving all the way out to Tripler in the middle of the day because if you've been in Hawaii long enough, you know traffic is like murder in the middle of the day. But anyway, off topic. Got on the phone with her and she asked me to to write down everything that is wrong to me from head to toe. Like everything that's wrong to me from head to toe. So me, I had to, I had to do it over several days to figure out what was truly wrong with me. So I had listed, I, I've listed just about everything that was wrong with me, from flat foot, high blood pressure, to knees, to headaches, just to everything that I could think of that could or could not be service connected, which I think which I think which all of it is service connected anyway. So service connected. So she can set up these appointments to go see these VA doctors to verify that that is what's going on with you, right? Make the verify that is service connected so that you can do your VA claim, right? So I started all that. So I gave that all to her. Me and her had a talk. I had to sign a paperwork saying, hey, this is everything that I feel that was VA that is, sorry, that is army or service connected. She's like, okay, I'll get back with you with all your appointments. The biggest thing she kept saying, don't miss appointments, don't miss appointments, don't miss appointments, all right? So while that's go, why I'm waiting on all of my appointments to get done, I went on the Army side, I had to do something called Soldier for Life or, or SFL, right? So these are skills and classes that you are required, mandated by the US government to take as you start your transition out of the um, military. So, what I tell you, they give you so much, so many resources, uh, tools, POCs to help with your transition. It is ridiculous, people. It, I mean, they give you so much. And like I said, I don't know what went on before because I know they said. Uh, SFL has been a, a, a ever-changing thing and it's changed over years, but they give you so much stuff. It's like what we always said. It's like drinking through a um, through a fire hose. They give you so much information. Like there was a VA breach, a VA breach class. That class was during near zero. That class started at 9 a.m. and did not end to roughly four o'clock in the afternoon. But they give you so much information about what you are, what you are eligible to have as getting out when it comes to the VA and not just on the 
not just on the oh my VA claims. It is a lot more that a veteran is eligible for once they get out. You know what I'm saying? So that class was so 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 incitive, so insight, so education. I use the word education. So education. They gave you this big old book too. Then there was a class they gave you a finance class just so you can understand finances when you get out. It isn't, and it's not just for retirees. It's for everybody. Like they. They they showed you they showed you this tool right and then they have you put in how much money you make now and all that other good stuff right then they say if you look down at the bottom of the uh, of the spreadsheet this how much money your next that you have to make on your next job to maintain the lifestyle you have now it is like it is just it is an amazing thing and you can do it by state. Like it, it was, it's um, it's amazing, people. And then, like yesterday, I had a Department of Labor class. That class started at 8 a.m. and that ended around 15. Well, I said it ended around 3:45, 4 o'clock. That class was probably it was very informational as well, but it was just boring because it was it was repetitive information. And then I think next week I have my CSP class, which is our career 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 skill real skills program where I have the option to do an apprenticeship or go work for a company as an intern for up to six months you know gain that and then that that kind of guarantees you a interview for that particular company it don't guarantee you a job but it guarantees you an interview and most of the time the interview is 80 percent of of what you need to do anyway so it, it like i said these, these weeks has been just jammed packed with stuff and then like getting back to my appointments they started giving me my appointments i had a hearing appointment <sighs> bruh what i tell you that's they they test so much more stuff than the army they do i did a hearing appointment and then i think today i have a behavior health appointment and then i have a vision appointment we have the next and then I have a full body medical exam, I think in like three weeks. So it is, it is so much. I'm just waiting on my med, I'm waiting on my um, sleep study now. It is just so much, man. It is, and a lot of people say like, you know, make sure your unit is, is okay with you doing all this. And like my unit, they barely task me with stuff like that. Well, I take that back. They did task me with being some kind of building facilities manager. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the world that is, but yeah, building facilities manager. But th like they have been so supportive. I said I'm gonna be out this day, this day, this day. Like okay, no problems. And like and I tell them, they be like, all right, whatever it is, what it is. So it is, it is, it is a miracle thing. I don't want to say miracle, but it is a thankful thing that leadership allows you take as much time to do all your appointments as possible and I try to build some of my work requirements you know I try to build my appointments around my work requirements or build my work requirements around my appointments my appointments take priority over everything like when it comes to SFL and then it comes to my VA appointments they take priority over everything so I build I build I build my work around but other than that but like other than that I think the process right now, my my process, and I know people are gonna be like, well, you're a senior, so they're not gonna bother you. I disagree, but my process has been kind of flawless right now. Like I've I've had no issues whatsoever with my appointments. I have no issues with me with, uh, with my Soldier for Life classes. It it really has been just a breeze for me. Like the biggest thing for me is just planning for what happens when I get out. And I think that's probably one of my downfalls that I procrastinate so much, but planning what it is to do when I get out. So we'll see, like, I will continue to keep you updated on what's going on. So a lot, a lot, a lot of people are wondering, when will I get out? That's a good question, because I don't even know my own self. So like, I, like um, the med board process takes a while. Like once all of my appointments are complete, like when all of my appointments, all of my medical appointments are complete, everything goes to a doctor then the doctor will determine whether i am fit or unfit for duty right but then that part right there 
is that is the time in Hawaii that takes the longest. That part right there is having a doctor look at your stuff and say whether you're fit or unfit. Once the doctor have deemed I am fit or unfit, um, and then my ratings come back, then they will cut orders for me to be like, okay, this is your last day in the military. This is your last day in the military. And then that's when I start my terminal leave and you know my permissive TDY and all that because like it it like that's so my terminal leave. I think right now I have like 50. Nope, I'm wrong. I have like probably 80 some days of terminal leave. Plus or minus 20 days, but you have like 80 day terminal leave. So for those ones, what about a terminal leave? Terminal leave is all my leave that I have saved up currently that I have not that I have not used. And then I can use all those when I get out. So if if I right now, if I have 59 days, I will be on leave for 59 days. Just sitting there collecting, collecting a paycheck for 59 days doing nothing. And that is also on top of what they call permissive TDY, which is house hunting leave, which can which would be up to 20 days. So there's 20 days of permissive TDY, then turn around to another 40 to 50 days of uh, internal leave. So I will ride the army system for a very long time. So, but all that's is entitled to, to people that's getting out in the military is to help you transition. It is, it is to help you start making a transition back to civilian life. So that is everything. So when I'm out in the military at this point, I have no idea. I am predicting probably, I am predicting maybe late this summer or either early winter. That's what I'm thinking at this point. And you know, in Hawaii, you don't get winters and all that good stuff, but that's how it happens. So, uh, but I know it should be this year. I should be done with the army in 2024. I do know that. I just don't know when in 2024 that I'll be done with the military. So we'll see, but I'm not going to bore you anymore on what's going on with me. People, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching the video as a whole. Thanks for the support. If you are new, please, please consider subscribing and click the bell so you'll know when I post another video. In the comments below, let me know, are you getting out of the military? Like, are you going through a med board? Or are you, are you going through a regular uh, PCS? And if you have been through a med board and you had horror stories with a med board, please let, let's talk about it down in the comments. Let me know. I even read your horror story out to the world so, every, so everybody can know that for every good thing that, that I can say, there's also people who did not have a good experiment with dealing with the med board process or the PCS process as well too. So with that being said, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all your support. I love you and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.